you know, these people who, who, who wear football shirts to express their identity are so 20th century. You've got to get up to speed. You've got to find something that defines you as a person. <laughs> Um, and this, I don't think anything defines me more than Marmite. I am, uh, I think in many ways, a, a, a Marmite artist. In the sense that you love me, or... We hate you. So that's kind of like, uh, when I'm looking for the issue of, of what it is to be English, and I'm trying to think about it in a kind of philosophical way, but the features editor always wants me to write a list of things that define you as English. Which I think is a real problem because top of my list would be the brown stuff. You know, there goes half the audience, never mind half the country, you know. So that's how spurious those lists are. Whatever Englishness is, it's much more uh, intangible than that. It it's, comes from many, many places. And my, my first feelings that I ever had about Englishness came to me from Scarborough Fair. And uh, I was about... 12 years old at the time, uh, it was one of those uh, dull school assemblies in 1970, where the sixth formers every Friday had to conduct the assembly themselves and, and make some profound statement from the classics of literature. But for some reason, this particular Friday morning, a gaggle of six form girls have decided instead they were going to play a record and uh, there was no uh, there was no music more profound to six form girls in 1970 than the work of Simon and Garfunkel and it was there that morning that I first heard Scarborough Fair and had feelings, tangible feelings of, of place, of belonging, of the thing that we refer to as Englishness. And it's, it's, it's really odd because it's been something I've thought of a lot in recent years, how feelings of Englishness could be engendered in me by two Jewish geezers from Queens playing with Bob Dylan's backing band now. How, how does that happen? You know, at the time in 1970, Scarborough Fair was being played by the person who taught it to Paul Simon. Standing here beside me, behind me. The governor. I oh, know. He's after Guinness sponsorship, as you can see by the way he's dressing. But... And I know for a fact that he was playing this song in the General Havelock Folk Club in Ilford, not more than two miles from where I lived. My own countrymen playing my music in my town. And yet, and yet, it took those two geezers from Queens to break through to me and connect with my culture. And then what they did then was they sent me off on a long journey We went back across the Atlantic, went through Bob Dylan, went through the singer-songwriters, and oddly enough, eventually came to my Carthy, to the Watersons, to Shirley and Dolly Collins, to the tradition. And it kind of bears out something that Woody Guthrie said about folk music. That is, what goes around, comes around. If we keep it all to ourselves and never let anybody borrow it, never let anybody mess with it, never let anybody take it forward, ultimately it will wither and die. That's what we need to do, that's what we're doing here today. Please welcome Mr Chris Wood.